So now we're going to get into um, the next part of chapter 33, the last part, and um, we're going to talk about segmentation. So analyta is going to be the next phylum, and um, that actually means rings. And that is because these worms actually do have segments that look like a bunch of rings kind of strung together. Think about like an earthworm and what that looks like. And so um, these guys, if I get to this picture, Maybe, there we go. Um, these guys are going to have this type of body plan that you see here. So um, the word, you know, the whole ring idea comes from all these different segments. But if we look inside, first of all, what kind of a circulatory system does it look like these guys have? So hopefully you're thinking closed because it has these hearts, has these veins, but it's completely closed off from the rest of the body. Um, what's interesting is they have all these hearts, right? That's a little bit funky. Oh my goodness, and now we can kind of see a brain. Yes, one of the first things besides the octopus that we were talking about that has pretty close to a brain. Um, so these guys, their body setup is a tube within a tube, right? So they've got that digestive tract going all the way through. Um, what you see in green here are going to be what they use for excretion, which are going to be the metanephridia. Anytime you see any pH that's like nephrons or anything like that, that has to do with excretion, like, and it's going to act like our kidneys is how you can think about it. Um, so these guys are going to, in some way, shape, or form, have, if I can get my pointer, um, these little things sticking off, which are called setae, which are going to be bristles. Some are going to have a lot, some are going to have just a few. All right, so this first group, this first class within the phylum Analyta, polyketa. Poly means many, keta means bristles. And if you look, these guys have a ton of bristles. These are actually called bristle worms. And um, these guys have oh, just a crazy looking um, jaw. I'll see if I can pull that up while we're going over our other stuff. Um, so bristle worms are going to be just one type of polychaete worm. But there are other ones. Um, if you look here, let's see if I can get this to work. Um, yeah, so these are going to be um, feather duster worms right here, and then right here are going to be what are called Christmas tree worms, so you can see why. Um, and so these guys are cool because they can actually suck into a hole if they get freaked out. Um, but those bristle worms are the ones that are really voracious predators, and I'll see if I can get this to come up. Polychaete worm mouth. I'm all about the crazy mouths that they have. Um, so it's pretty amazing. Um, these guys have a very, very well-developed jaw. Uh, yeah, it looks like something out of a horror movie. Um, and these guys are voracious predators. They will um, eat corals. They will eat other fish and worms. So you can see here, um, just crazy to see that, that face, right? So they're pretty gnarly little guys. Okay, um, then the next class that we're going to talk about is Oligokita. Oligo means few, kita means bristles. So earthworms are going to be in this category. And these guys actually do have a couple of bristles here and there, and that's to help them grip the soil as they push through it. And then finally, we have hirudinia, which doesn't really have a great translation or anything, and this is going to be the leeches. But you can still see that ring structure, that's why they're in the phylum Analyta. And these are obviously parasitic, they're going to be... Um, eating the blood of different individuals, so they're lovely. But what's cool about these guys is when they do release the blood from an organism, they actually are going to secrete an anticoagulant, which keeps the blood from clotting, because obviously that's their dream come true. And um, they are used in surgeries. So if they have a surgery occurring and they don't want the blood to clot, they can actually use these guys to keep the blood from clotting. One of my old 112 students, that's his job now, is to culture the um, sterile leeches at a hospital. So you never know where bio 12 will take you. Are you scared now? Okay. Now, the next group of organisms, and this is a group of phyla we're going to talk about, are called the lophophorids. And that's because they have a U-shaped mouth that have um, kind of tentacles coming off of them. And there's going to be three types. So you've got foranids, ectoprox, and brachiopods. So I'll show you the foranids first. They're also called bri um, sorry, not bryozoans. Um, let's see, hydroids of some type. 
if I can get this to come up. There we go, coordinates. Um, so these guys are going to have kind of that polyp-like structure, and then they have that U-shaped mouth with these tentacles coming off. And these guys will actually um, secrete kind of like a cement, and that will make a little tube that they can live in. It's kind of like this tube that you see here, but if you've ever seen like tubes that look like they're made of sand washing up on the beach, that's going to be these guys that are going to secrete that. Then the next group, ectoprocta. Let's think about what this actually translates to. Ecto means outside. Procta means what? What does a proctologist study? Anuses, right? Now I'm going to go to the board and um, draw something. So these guys are going to have that U-shaped mouth and the tentacles. And they're going to have this U-shaped gut. So their mouth is right by the anus. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but I'll try and put it over there. So the mouth is right next to the anus. Now, these ectoprocs, these um, guys in this category, are actually pretty awesome because what they can do is they can actually extend their anus past their mouth so they're not pooping in their mouth all the time. So, I mean, if you're going to be some type of foranid, I would like to be an ectoprox. There you go, or lophophorid, I should say. All right, and then the last one in this group is going to be the brachiopods. And brachiopods are also called lamp shells because it's a shell that's on a stalk. And so you can see the shell here, and then the U-shaped mouth is inside there. So that's going to be that group. Now, going back to the notes, just to make sure I covered everything, I did. All right, now we're going to talk about a huge group that's going to be called phylum arthropoda. Um, and actually, I'm going to put that on the next video.